Today I want to talk about the Edgeland EPM series uh, power meter, especially the uh, E4418 and 19 series. Now the EPM series basically uh, was the successor of the uh, HP 437, 438 and 436 series power meters. Um, <clears throat> There was obviously a need um, to move on and develop uh, new power sensor models with a higher dynamic range and uh, also that incorporated a uh, e prom to store the calibration data and calibration factors. Um, <clears throat> other companies at the time already were doing it uh, and Ritsu, Gordon Schwartz already had power sensors out uh, as well as Gigatronics with uh, the calibration factor stored inside. Only uh, Edgeland HP was kind of uh, lagging behind on that still with the old 84, uh, 80 series uh, thermocouple power sensors. And so there definitely was a need uh, for a new generation of power sensors and of course since the all the power meters didn't support this. There was a need uh, to redesign the power meter, and the result was the E4418. Um, <clears throat> the E4418 and 19, basically, the main difference was that the E4418 is a single channel, 4419 is a dual channel uh, power meter. Um, the first power sensors that came out alongside with those meters was the E4412 that went to 18 gigahertz and um, <clears throat> then the E4413 to 26.5 um, gigahertz and then later on additional sensors were added on uh, to the line to cover more frequencies and power ranges. So the initial power meter was the E4418A um, <clears throat> basically E4418 A's and the later B model, the main difference in between the A and the B model was simply that the B in addition to the GBIB also had a serial interface as well as a Ethernet interface. So the 4418 was kind of differed from the older models um, in several regards. The form factor was retained to the 438, 437, so uh, the meter could be easily swapped out in a rack mount environment. Um, <clears throat> the 4418 had a large LCD screen instead of uh, the classic LED um, <clears throat> that were used or the small LCDs on the low cost on the 437. Um, it had a rubber keypad as well and the whole front panel was basically extruded plastic uh, rather than with the older meters it was like a sheet metal uh, part and it was screwed in in a cast aluminum front frame this was not retained with the E4418 the 4418 was uh, built more to be low cost and um, it clearly shows through also the whole chassis assembly is also uh, pressed cheap metal so the whole thing is a lot cheaper so let's take a look inside of the meter and <clears throat> basically I got one right here that I already opened so I just want to pull here for a minute and so this is basically how this meter looks on the inside um, we got a lithium battery right here and this is actually one of the Achilles heels of the meter because unlike uh, other pieces of equipment instead of using a ROM or an EEPROM uh, to store the configuration information on EEPROM 
um, actually used battery backup RAM. And so basically if this lithium cell goes bad, then uh, it needs to be replaced and the instrument, even if it's a 4418B, uh, it reverts to being an E4418A and the serial number will be gone as well as some other configuration uh, information. So I got another video about that, um, talking about how to restore those. But so <clears throat> anyway, uh, then back here on this side, we have the power supply. This obviously was not a power supply. So it was made by HLN. They just bought this one uh, from an external company, from an external vendor. Once again, it's about cost efficiency. And then over on the right side, we got the measurement uh, board. And <clears throat> what's really the interesting thing about this is, is that uh, basically this measurement board is sitting right here on what I call a riser board. So this is back here in uh, this card cage. And <clears throat> so basically this card cage and everything is identical in between the A and the B. Uh, we basically see if I remove this measurement board here just for a minute. And so now we see this whole card cage. And interestingly, see uh, measure the riser board we can see down here they already holds drilled and just filled with tin and <clears throat> so basically this riser board is identical between the, the four and 18 and 19 uh, on the 18 this is just not populated right here and <clears throat> then back here we got the communication boards uh, <clears throat> that's basically holding all the communication uh, interfaces of the meter. This is different in between the A and the B. And if you look at the back of this A meter, you see that it's basically it has only uh, the GPIB interface. And now I want to take a look at the back of the B. And on the B, we see clearly uh, the RS-232 as well as the Ethernet interface. So like I said, everything pretty much is identical between the A and the B meter, except of the communication board. And so in closing, I will also want to take a quick look at the uh, front panel. And I got one that's pulled right here. So we see on the inside there's a little sheet metal, uh, stamped sheet metal for EMC screening. And then we got the uh, measurement uh, inputs right here. And then this one goes to the keypad that's hidden under this, this uh, sheet metal right here. And another interesting little piece is right here. If we look at the back of this of this uh, front panel, we see there are already two holes in there. So this front panel is also identical uh, between the 18 and 19 meter. And as a matter of fact, in a, another video, I'm gonna show you how to add a second measurement channel to an E4418B. But that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like my videos and follow me on YouTube for more test and measurement and microwave videos. Thank you.